Today I'm going to show you how we can get the information from your fully kiosk tablet into Home Assistant and how we can create sensors and use some automations to make it a little bit more smarter. If you want to see how I installed the fully kiosk browser itself, then check this video over here. If not, let's roll the intro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. For everyone that's new, I'm Gio from Smartphone Makers. And if you hear my voice a little bit different, I actually did get you know what. Um, so I'm fine, but uh, that's the reason why of this voice. Anyway, let's carry on with the video. So if you remember from the last video, I asked you to turn on the remote admin. If you've turned that on and you have the IP address of the fully kiosk browser, you should be able to navigate to 192. In my example, it's 192.168.171 port is 2323 and here the command equals home is what you're going to be using. So I'm going to add the password that I created previously. I'm going to click OK and we're in the device now. So we can see a lot of information about the device. More of it is around settings. So we can change many of the settings. Uh, some of them require the license, the plus license, which we're going to look at getting today as part of this video. In the home settings, you can actually give uh, separate commands. So you can load a different URL if you want to change your home assistant dashboard. You can actually show a cam shot and I can do that right now and say OK. And you can see the actual cam shot. Uh, it's all pretty dark downstairs at this stage. So this is quite cool, but we're going to also look at how we can do many things like this in Home Assistant directly. Now I'm hopping onto the fully kiosk. I'm going to go to pricing and I'm going to see my full plus license. So I'm going to be getting this one here for seven euro for each device. It's a one-time payment um, and it's discounting if you're buying more than one. Uh, enter your device ID as shown in fully kiosk. So the device ID, so let's go back and let's go to the home page. You can see our fully device ID. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste inside here. And I say, OK, cool. So it's ping my country of residence, United Kingdom. So I'm going to go ahead now off screen quickly and I'm just going to uh, purchase the license. Now, it's really important to set this tablet on a static IP address. And to do that, the best way to do that is to go into your router. And I'm going to show you how I do it with my Unify setup. So in the Unify dashboard over here, go and navigate to the clients, which should be right here. And now there are several ways which you can find it. If you know the current IP address of it, you can just search for it in that way. If you've renamed your tablet, you'll find where it is. So I'll just click on it and if I scroll down, I can see it's linked to the specific Wi-Fi which I'm using for my IoT devices. If I go to settings, I can see I just toggle this use fixed IP address right over here. Um, select a network if you have VLANs and just use the IP address. And I'm just picking any IP address within my range. I'm picking 71. And that's that. Now I'm going to actually show you how I've created these three sensors and you can see them over here. The first sensor is the tablet backlight. Currently it's off. That's actually a light, not a sensor. And this enables me to turn on and off the tablet basically as if it was a light and I can actually control the brightness of the screen, which is quite cool. The other one over here, you can see is a sensor, is the kitchen tablet settings. And you can see several settings. And uh, first of all, you can see the starting URL, which is my home system internal IP address. And this is the Lovelace dashboard that I'm currently using over here. And you can see the settings that I've got set up. So microphone, screen brightness, and uh, all other things going on. The sensor kitchen fire tablet, which you see is updating quite frequently because I've just uh, put that license on. And you can see things like the IP address, the battery level, if it's plugged in or not, the orientation, the start page. There's a lot of information in here. So obviously we need to go to our configuration at YAML. Here we'll be using configuration at YAML or sensors.yaml if you have them separated. And we'll be also using secrets.yaml. In the secrets file, we need three entries. One for the URL, one for the command, and the last one for the settings. You can see they're pretty much similar on my screen over here, you're going to need to change the IP address to your own IP address over here, replace it and all of them. 
you're going to need to change the password. So when you have password, I have password over here. Now replace where it says smart home makers with your own secure password. Now this is not my password, it's just an example for this video, so don't worry. And do the same thing for all three of them. Remember to call this whatever you wanna call this. I'm calling it kitchen fire tablet. You could be calling it a uh, lounge Samsung tablet or whatever, depending on what you have. So rename this accordingly and remember the name. Uh, so once it's done, save it and let's move to the configuration of YAML. Add these three lines of code over here, rest underscore command, and then add something called kiosk command or tablet command, whatever you wanna do. And then add the URL. For the URL, we're gonna be using that uh, command that we've used. So what is this gonna do? This is gonna give us a new service within services. So if you go to developer tools and services, for example, like light that turn on and toggle, and this is gonna enable us to send commands to the tablet. For example, we can change some of the settings from Home Assistant without actually even either going to the tablet or going into the fully kiosk browser. It is also a good idea to get familiar with this as this will be quite crucial when you go and get your automations done. The second two are just gonna be sensors. Now these sensors are gonna be using the REST platform and I have two of them separated, separated out. One is the Kitchen Fire tablet and one I call Kitchen Tablet Settings. And you can see I'm using the JSON attributes. So if you recall from a previous video where I talked a lot about JSON and if you're still a bit confused and struggling with using JSON, then I recommend you watch that video, which I'm gonna link somewhere over here. Uh, anyway, so you, we can pick certain attributes from the JSON object and it's really up to you to pick as many as you want. I've picked the ones that I feel are most sensible. And uh, one thing I do wanna point out it, there was a longitude and latitude of the device. Now, if you're concerned about the location of this device and it magically wandering off, then you might want to keep it. But for me, that I'm doing a lot of screen sharing, having your longitude and latitude doesn't feel safe and secure. Um, so I just got rid of that data because it's not necessary. So yeah, so get as much uh, information as you want from the tablet. Remember that you need a, a state, the actual state will be the value underscore template. So whatever you give over here is going to be your state. If you want your battery temperature to be your state, then you can do that. I find that the screen being the screen is the screen on or off as the state of the device is the most uh, valuable information to have over here. And I'm using the value underscore JSON to get that information with the classic curly brackets, as you know from your templating. The second sensor is more for the actual settings of the device. So one basically is gonna show us the statuses of the device, the status of the device, right? Is it on or off? And the other one actually is gonna tell us what well, have we enabled or disabled microphone access or camera. So those, those are the differences. And they actually use a slightly different API, a slightly different call. So that's why this is different. As you will note, the resource, which is one of the secrets that we use, one of them uses the URL called Kitchen Fire Tablet URL and the other one Kitchen Fire Tablet Settings, which I've added to my secrets file, as you've seen sort of previously. The scan interval is gonna dictate how frequently we're gonna pull and go and get that information back from the device. And once you've got all this set up, feel free to copy and paste this from the blog. I'm gonna link the whole blog. It's gonna contain uh, everything from start to finish. So if you've missed part one, you can sort of follow the blog and the video within the blog will sort of guide you through and, and you know stitch it all together. So this is done. Now we can look at doing something a bit more exciting like an automation. But if you're getting value out of this video, remember to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for many more smart on videos this year. Now I'm gonna show you a cool automation that you can actually do with this integration. So it's not just all pointless. The automation I'm gonna be looking at is the doorbell chime. Now I've got a Nest doorbell integrated into Home Assistant and when that presses, it can trigger many things. One thing that I'm looking to trigger is that it will change the smart home uh, tablet dashboard or default view. So instead of having a generic view, it's gonna switch onto the view of the doorbell itself. 
So that's going to enable me if I walk past the tablet while I'm going to the door, I can immediately see the picture, you know, on the stream of whoever's at the door. So that's very convenient. And then I want it to switch it back to the default view. So how we do that? Well, I created this. I'm going to show you the code over here. Once we have our doorbell press event and we have a specific device ID, which is that Nest uh, front door doorbell and we're looking for the doorbell chime as a specific type then the first thing we're going to be doing is the rest command so you remember i said rest underscore command kiosk command we said that in configuration.yaml previously now we're starting to leverage it what are we actually doing we are uh, sending three values now the data is is sort of containing our input so we're sending to the API three values we're sending the set string setting so we can either set a string or we can set a boolean this will depend on what setting you're wanting to control in our example we want to control the start URL which you can see over here on the key now the start URL is gonna tell me where you know which home assistant dashboard to show now I want to show and I've got my IP address slash lovelace iPad slash nest. So that's the full URL of that dashboard. And just for reference, I'll just copy and paste it over here and I'll open it so you can actually see it. So you can see this is the, the front door uh, view and the I've one over here. What is this doing? This block of code over here. It switches it back. So these are pretty much the same. So 271 to 275 and 281 to 285, they're exactly the same piece of code. Actually, it's a bit of repetition over here. I could probably uh, generalize this and improve this. I could create a script um, that makes this even more cleaner. But anyway, the point is the same. The value is different and that's what's happening over here. And in the middle, we just have our delay, which goes from 276 to 280. That's the block that defines the delay, and the delay is a minute, so I have one minute between the doorbell pressing and the dashboard switching back to normal. You can set this to whatever you want. Now, what other scenarios could you think you could use this for? I'm thinking about a baby monitor, for example. Now, if you had, uh, if you knew that your baby was sleeping, so you could have a button to control that and an input boolean in Home Assistant. And if the baby did wake up, that would be simple to find out, right? Motion sensor or some sort of uh, vibration sensor, whatever, right? You wanted to implement, and then you can have not only like notifications to your phone, but also you can have your wall panel switching to the actual camera, the feed of the baby monitor, right? And that will be quite cool because you have an instant feedback and instant view without actually thinking about what's going on. You could also do something as simple as a time of day, right? So if it's in the morning, I want the default tablet to be something uh, A, you know, if it's a work day, I want it to be different. If it's a weekend, I want the default tablet to change. So you do a lot of things with this uh, command over here. If you missed part one, I'm gonna leave it over here and you can follow that video so it makes it all clear. If you want to find out even more and you want to go into more details, I do have a dashboarding course on my platform. There's going to be a link in the description down below. Feel free to check it out if that you're interested in exploring your dashboarding skills. This is Joe from Smile Makers. See you in the next one. Ciao.